Hello everybody, it's Ocelot, and welcome to my Rivers of Blood guide. This is going to be my first new game plus guide, but we will be starting at the end of base new game because there are a few things we need to do before we go to new game plus. There's a few things too also that you don't want to do on base new game, namely if you followed my overpowered Nagakiba guide, which you can find the link at the top right of your screen. That's actually a great guide that you can use to transfer that character into new game plus. We'll go over everything we need to do before moving to New Game Plus. Just go ahead and take a look at the footage and see how overpowered this build is going to be. So first things first, do not kill Millicent. If you followed my Nagakiba guide or whether you're going through new game on your own, you do not want to kill Millicent and you want to actually side with her at the end of her quest. So we're going to pick it up here in Windmill Village. Here is where normally you can kill her for Millicent's prosthesis. However, what we're going to do is we're going to talk to her and we're going to get her to move to the mountaintops and we'll talk to her a few more times. After exhausting Millicent's dialogue, let's warp over to the ancient Snow Valley ruins site of Grace. There you will find Millicent, exhaust her dialogue there, and then you're going to want to warp to the prayer room site of Grace in Elfel the Halo Tree. After exhausting dialogue here, you next want to warp to the drainage channel side of Grace. I will show you the path that you need to take to fight the mini boss. I will also speed it up though for time's sake. So once you beat this boss, I will show you on screen, but there will be two glyphs on the ground. One will be to assist Millicent, and one will be to go against Millicent. You want to choose the gold sign and assist Millicent. After taking care of Millicent's sisters, you'll be rewarded with the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, which raises attack power with successive attacks. Next, you're going to warp to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace in Altus Plateau, fight Gillica, and there's going to be a door with the Ritual Sword Talisman. After picking up the Ritual Sword Talisman, you can go after the White Mask, which is at Mogwin Palace. You need to get this before you kill Moog. In Lanedale, you want to go to the Lanedale Catacombs and beat the boss there for the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. While we're in Lanedale and before you fight Malekith and burn the Erd Tree completely, we're going to pick up the Gravel Seal. This is going to be dropped by a Lanedale Knight. You just need to defeat him and he'll drop the Gravel Seal. Next, we're going to get the Shard of Alexander. I'm going to show you a quick rundown on how to do his quest. Do not kill him before you complete his quest. So after killing Radon, you need to exhaust his dialogue in the Wailing Dunes. Then you go to Mount Gelmir and exhaust his dialogue there. Then you go to Crumbling Pharaoh Missoula and spar with him and he will give you the Shard of Alexander. 
next talisman is optional. It's the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. You need to start at the drainage channel site of Brace, and I will show you exactly how to get there. Just follow me on screen. This is going to be right above the elevator or the lift that takes you down to Melania. Next, let's pick up the featured weapon. Let's go get the Rivers of Blood. So in the mountaintops, you're going to go to the Church of Repose. If you don't have the Sight of Grace, just go near the church and you'll get invaded by Bloody Finger Okina. Easily take him down and he'll drop you the Rivers of Blood, the featured weapon. Hey! Now that we have our weapon, Let's get the seal we're going to be using. So if you have it, let's go to the stranded graveyard site of Grace in Limgrave. This is the very beginning of the game. You're going to need two stone sword keys to get through the door. You're going to go through halfway through the, the dungeon and you're going to fight a banished knight. He's going to drop the dragon communion seal. Next, let's go to Mount Gilmere to the Corpse Stench Shack. We're going to get the Golden Vow Incantation. Our next stop is going to be just south of the Grand Lift of Dectis. We're going to be picking up Howl of Shabriri in the Frenzied Flame Tower. Just follow me on screen on how to get up there safely. And just south of Howl of Shabriri, there's a minor Ur tree that will drop you elemental tiers. We're interested in the Lightning Shrouding Crack tier. Next stop will be North Kalid at another minor Erd tree. I have the Rear Gale Tunnel entrance. If you don't have it, you can warp to the Third Church of America and take the Spirit Springs and head northeast. But we're going to be fighting another minor Erd tree. Next, we're going to go to Weeping Peninsula to the northern section of it. We're going to be picking up the Faith Tier. Just west of Raya and south of Blackguard, we're going to be picking up the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tier. If you haven't done so, go ahead and level up the Rivers of Blood to plus 10 and the Dragon Communion Seal to plus 10 as well. Now the next few minutes you can skip if you'd like, but I went ahead and did a comparison of the Nagakiba with Double Slash and Blood Flame Blade versus three different stat allocations on the Rivers of Blood. 
So I tested on the same enemy, same buffs. So first I did a keen Nagakiba with double slash. I apply Golden Vow, Hala Shabriri, and then Blood Flame Blade. Now, obviously the Rivers of Blood is not buffable. So besides Blood Flame Blade, it's gonna be the same physics, which has the Thorny Crack tier and the Faith tier. With Double Slash on the Nagakiba, as you'll see on our test dummy here, on the first two slashes, we get 1,893 damage. That's with the Keen Nagakiba, Double Slash, and Blood Flame Blade. Here are my stats. Next, we're going to allocate stats leaning towards Dex. So 60 Dexterity, 26 Arcane. Those are going to be our damaging stats for the Rivers of Blood. Again, we did Golden Vow and Hala Shabriri. We did the same enemy, same tiers in the Physic, Thorny Crack tier and the Faith Knot Crystal tier. And we're going to be comparing the two first two slashes as well. So with the Dex leaning allocation on our test dummy here, we get 1,611 damage. That is almost 300 damage difference. So now let's allocate our stats leaning towards Arcane. 66 Arcane, 20 Dexterity with the Rivers of Blood. This time we get 1,253 damage. So we do get a little bit more damage with Dexterity. Now let's do a balanced build with 50 Arcane and 36 Dexterity. This is actually what we'll be going into New Game Plus with. Same buffs, same tiers. And on our test dummy, on the first two slashes, we get 1,338 damage. But back to setup. And now we're going to be going to Liernia, south of the eastern Liernia Lakeshore site of Grace. We'll be killing this Landell Knight for the Dragon Cult Prayer Book. Our next stop is going to be Crumbling Faramazula to the Tempest Facing Balcony Site of Grace. You're going to want to turn around once you warp there and go back towards the beginning. On the ground, you'll be picking up the Ancient Dragon Prayer Book. Next, we're going to the mountaintops of the Giants. We're going to the White Ridge Road site of Grace. We'll be heading into the Guardian's Garrison. So follow me on screen. I'll show a sped up video on where we are going. There's going to be a few enemies in there. There's going to be Guardians. Also, there's going to be on the top floor two dogs to deal with. And there's also going to be a priest with the one-eyed shield. So be careful with all of those enemies. Once you deal with the enemies and you continue heading up, you'll find a ladder and up the ladder you'll be getting the Giant's Prayer Book. Next, we'll be heading to the Church of Vows in Liernia. I didn't have the grace there, so from the eastern tableland side of grace, you can just head west. We're going to turn oh, in all the prayer here? books to Muriel, well. and you're going to purchase to all of the lightning incantations the except for Electrify Armament and true. all of the fire incantations. I also bought Blessings Boon. This is purely optional. I actually don't use it, but it is a good healing healing over time spell if you so choose to purchase it.
We're done with Muriel. We're going to go back to the mountaintops of the giants to the giant conquering hero's grave. We're going to be going after the giant seal. This is going to be in a lower section of the dungeon right before the boss fog. Normally there's a troll here that you need to defeat. I've already defeated him. You just drop down to the bottom, ignore the enemy, grab the giant seal, and you can get on out of there. After this, we'll be going after the fire scorpion charm in Mount Gelmir. Fire scorpion charm is in Fort Lave. If you don't have it, you can go to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace and follow the route I'm marking on screen. Go to Fort Lathe and pick up the Fire Scorpion Charm. Also near the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace, there's going to be a dungeon, the Wyndham Catacombs. In the Wyndham Catacombs, we'll be picking up the Lightning Scorpion Charm. That's it for our base new game setup. There's a few more things we need to do in New Game Plus. There's a few things you can do also, such as farm for Rhymed Crystal Bud if you like. Rhymed Crystal Bud is used for crafting freezing pots. They are definitely helpful. Here's the stats we'll be going into New Game Plus with. Our damaging stats is 50 Arcane, 36 Dexterity. If you are at rune level 150, these are the stats I recommend. We'll be going in at rune level 125. We have the Rivers of Blood plus 10, Dragon Communion Seal plus 10, White Mask, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Ritual Sword Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Shard of Alexander, the Thorny Tier, and the Faith Tier. Let's begin our journey on New Game Plus. Remember that grafted scion from the beginning of base new game? Well go ahead and get your revenge. This is your time. If you didn't get it in base new game, you can go ahead and kill him now. Now since you've already been through the game once, I do cut out most of the running for new game plus. If there is some important running, I do put it in. For the most part, I'll have it sped up. A few changes on New Game Plus that I can think of right off the top of my head is that you start off with Torrent. You still need to talk to Melina, but you get Torrent right off the bat. Also, when you're in swamps or rot that usually would slow you down in base New Game, you can easily walk through them in New Game Plus. Remember that Tree Sentinel? Go ahead and get your revenge if you didn't get it in base New Game. So after you easily dispatch the sentinel, go ahead and ride towards the gate front. You're going to want to rest and speak to Melina so she can become your maiden. To the foot. Then it summoned me. Ah, Torrent, treat him with. So now let's warp to the first step side of Grace. We're going to head east to the Dragon Burnt Ruins. There's a teleporter trap chest you're going to want to take. It's going to take you into Kaled. There's a few things we're going to do here. Main thing that we're going to start is Millicent's quest. So once you get transported, go ahead and head south and out towards Commander O'Neill. When you get to Commander O'Neill, I'm going to show you that you can fight him with the summon if you so choose. There's going to be a yellow summoning sign. Also, if you followed my last guide, you'll have a plus 10 mimic you can use. I don't use summons though, so if you'd like to fight him and get the jump on him, just follow me on screen.
So after taking care of Commander O'Neill, you want to take the unalloyed gold needle east to Sage Gowry. He's going to ask you for time to repair the needle so you can either reload the area by quitting out and loading the game back or warping to a grace and coming back to him. Since there's another thing I'd like to do, which is purchase dragon incantations, I went ahead and did that. So follow me on screen as we go to the Cathedral of Dragon Communion. We're going to be using the five hearts we got from the Elder Dragon Grail in Dragon Barrel. If you haven't killed the dragon or don't have the five hearts, she is in Dragon Barrel near Fort Faroth. At the Cathedral of Dragon Communion, we're going to want to buy all five of the dragon incantations. So, Rotten Breath, Dragon Fire, Glintstone Breath, Dragon Ice, and Dragon Claw. So let's go ahead and rest at the grace and get taken to the round table by Melina. Very well. So while we're at the round table, I went ahead and rested and equipped three of the dragon incantations. I'm going to equip dragon ice, dragon fire, and glintstone breath. Next, we'll warp back to Kaled to the heart of Aeonia side of grace. We're going to head east, talk to Sage Gowry, and get the repaired needle. We're going to take that to the Church of Plague to Millicent. We need to go through Celia Town of Grace though. So go ahead and follow me on screen. I'll speed it up here. But we need to light one fire because there's going to be a door that is blocked off. Once we light this fire, we can continue through. And just follow me on screen as I head to Millicent. So here at the Church of Plague, you want to give Millicent the repaired needle. After giving her the repaired needle, to go ahead and rest at the site of Grace, and then you're going to talk to her and exhaust her dialogue. If you don't have a plus 12 flask yet, don't forget to pick up that sacred tear. When you're done with Millicent, you're going, on, you're going to want to head north to Fort Ferrith and pick up the first half of the Dectus Medallion. After picking up the medallion, you want to warp to the heart of Aeonia Site of Grace. We're going to head east to Gowry Shack. We're going to exhaust Millicent's dialogue. So this is the next spot that Millicent will be at. She's going to be near the Lux Ruins, which is near the Erd Tree Hill Gazing Site of Grace. We'll put her quest on pause real quick. We're going to warp to the First Step Site of Grace and head east. We'll be going after the last half of the Dectus Medallion in Fort Height. I'll show you the route I took. I am going to speed it up. However, I will slow it down when I get to the Waypoint Ruins. I fight the mini boss there. Main reason was so I had a convenient sight of grace. He is completely optional and doesn't give many runes. So if you don't want to fight him, just continue to head east to Fort Height. you take down the mad pumpkin head go ahead and leave the waypoint ruins you're going to head southeast towards fort height and we're going to pick up the last half of the dectus medallion
So after you pick up the second half of the Dectus Medallion, you're going to want to warp to the Gatefront Ruins. You're going to head north towards Stormvale Castle. We're going after our first boss. Well, our first major boss. We're going after Margit. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we have the Thorny Crack tier. We also have the Faith tier. For buffs, we're going to start with Golden Vow and then end off with Howlish Shabriri. Right after Margaret goes down, we're gonna head straight through Stormvale Castle and go after Godric. Godric goes down easily. Once you've taken care of him, head north through Stormvale Castle into Liernia. You're going to want to head all the way into the Lascar Ruins site of Grace. You're going to want to go into the Lascar Ruins. There's a teleporter that will take you right outside of Raya Lucaria Academy. Once you go through, you're going to want to grab the grace, but we're not going after the key just yet. We're going to head directly east from this location to another teleporter. So just follow me on screen. I am going to speed it up, but you should be able to follow. teleporter will take you directly south of the King's Realm Ruins, which will also take you directly south of Smithing Master E.G. There's a grace. Go ahead and grab it, and you're going to head north towards Caria Manor. Grab the grace right outside of Caria Manor, but we won't be going in just yet. After you grab this grace, you're going to head east. I'll show you the route I take, but we'll be going towards the Grand Lift of Dectis. I'm going to speed it up here. But I am going to slow it down because we're going to stop at the next church to level up. Go ahead and pop golden runes to get to the next level. We're going to be putting two points into Arcane. So after leveling up, you're going to want to head north to the Grand Lift of Dectus. You're going to take the lift into Altus Plateau and grab that first side of Grace. You're going to head north to the east side of the Lux Ruins and grab the Erd Tree Hill Gazing side of Grace. We will be heading to the Shaded Castle for the Valkyrie's Prosthesis. But before we go there, we're going to pick up this Grace and one more Grace. Just follow me on screen, I'll show you the route to the next grace.
So after picking up this grace in Mount Gilmere, you're going to continue north into the Shaded Castle. In the Shaded Castle, you're going to pick up the Valkyrie's Prosthesis. After picking that up, we're going to head to the Erd Tree Hill Gazing Site of Grace. We're going to talk to Millicent and give her the prosthesis. Ah. So go ahead and, and give it to her, exhaust her dialogue, and warp back to the Mount Gilmere Site of Grace that we just picked up. Are you giving me this? Oh, thank you. The Windmill Village is going to be where we finish Millicent's questline. Before we go there though, let's warp to the Bridge of Iniquity Site of Grace and head east. We're going to stop at the Writheblood Ruins and fight this NPC. We're going to invade them, take him out, and that'll be one less task to do for Vare's quest in the future. Take down Magnus, continue to head east into the Windmill Village. In the Windmill Village, you're going to want to take out the Godskin Apostle. If you have Sleep Pots, he is weak to sleep, so go ahead and put him to sleep and easily take him out. So after taking down the Apostle, go ahead and rest at the site of grace that appears. After resting, Millicent should appear. You are going. You don't need to talk to her because we're interested in taking her prosthesis from her. So go ahead and kindly ask her to give it to you. It's going to be the last talisman we need for this run. After acquiring Millicent's prosthesis, which raises attack power with successive attacks, go ahead and equip it instead of the Ritual Sword Talisman. Millicent's prosthesis stacks with the Rotten Sword Insignia. So you're going to have the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Millicent's prosthesis, Rotten Sword Insignia, and the Shard of Alexander for most of the run. Let's go ahead and warp to the South Raya Lucaria Gate. We're going to head west and then north to pick up the Academy Key guarded by Glintstone Dragon Smarag. Go ahead and easily take her out and then grab the Academy Key. After taking down Smarag and grabbing the Academy Key, let's head south. There's a grace we're going to pick up for convenience later. After we pick up this grace, we're going to warp to the academy. I'm not going to show myself running through it. The next part of this video will be fighting the Red Wolf of Radagon. take down the red wolf we're going to continue through the academy and we're next we're going to fight moongrum after you dispatch moongrum we're going to fight our second remembrance boss Renala. so when i fight Renala. I take down two of the three sweetings and before I take down the last one, I go ahead and put on my buffs. Start with the flask, golden bow, hollow shabriri, and then send it. After 
after you take down the last sweetie, go ahead and unleash a full corpse piler combo on Renala. For phase two, you're going to want to run straight at her and unleash another full corpse piler combo, and Renala will go down easily. So let's go ahead and level up. We're going to put three points into Arcane. Go ahead and warp to the Altus Plateau site of Grace, head east towards the capital. We're going to fight the Draconic Tree Sentinel which is gatekeeping the entrance. If you have any golden seeds or sacred tears, go ahead and use them at the site of grace. After doing so, we're going to level up. We're going to put one point into vigor. So you can either run past this avatar or kill it. It doesn't drop that many runes, but it does drop a big fat golden rune. That's the main reason why I killed it. Also for the next fight against Goldfree, I'm going to recommend that you swap out the Lord of Blood's Exaltation for either the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Fire Scorpion Charm, or the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. Since this mini boss doesn't bleed either you could have swapped it out for that mini boss as well now, I do get a little beat up in this fight but mainly you want to watch out for his stomp it unleashes an area of effect on the ground which can damage you you can take damage from rolling so I usually like to jump over it With gold free down, let's go ahead and level up. We're going to be putting one point into vigor and two points into dexterity. If you did a talisman swap, don't forget to swap back the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Now in this fight too, I get a little beat up. Morgoth's always been a difficult boss for me because he has such long combos. If you're having trouble, use your summon. Or if you know where to get Margot's Shackle, that works on Morgoth as well. If you don't know where to get it, you can get it in Limgrave from Patches.
be forgiven. Getting the rolled medallion from Melina. Go ahead and level up. You're going to put three points into Vigor. We're going to continue east towards the mountaintops of the Giants. But we're going to grab the first sight of grace in the Forbidden Lands. We're going to head back up the lift. And we're actually going to activate Morgoth's Great Rune. Morgoth's Great Rune gives you an extra 25% HP when a Rune Arc is active and his Rune is equipped. After activating Morgoth's Great Rune, we're going to head back into Kaled. We're going to be going after General Radon. Before we do that, however, I'm going to show you how to equip Morgoth's Great Rune and how to activate it with the Rune Arc. So to skip Radon's arrow phase, once you go through the teleporter, you want to head directly towards the camera. You want to head directly towards the camera until you can't see the flash of his arrow anymore. I usually put on my flask here and golden vow, and when I get closer, that's when I put on Howl of Shabriri. Right RNG, you'll have a one cycle Radon. Let's go ahead and level up. We'll put one point into Dexterity, one point into Arcane. Next, we'll be heading to Carry a Manor. If you didn't pick it up in base new game, I'll show you where to get the Freeze Pot recipe. Basically, you're going to go through the gates of Carry a Manor and make a right, which is slightly southeast. For the next boss, Loretta Shade, she doesn't bleed, so I recommend swapping out the Lord of Blood's Exaltation for the Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Sword Talisman, or the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. So after easily defeating Loretta, you're going to want to head to Ronnie's Rise and start Ronnie's quest. Talk mm. to Selavis and EG. Once you're done talking to them, warp to the Fort Heights Site of Grace. We're going to go through the hole that was created after fighting Radon. Also, don't forget to swap back in the Lord of Blood's Exaltation.
for the next fight, we're going to be fighting the Mimic tier. Go ahead and unequip all your weapons, even your seal. If you want to go as far as unequipping your talismans and armor, go for it. I just see unequip my weapons and the seal. We're going to be fighting the Regal Ancestor Spirit. There's going to be six flames that you need to light up. Once you light them all up, the Regal Ancestor Spirit body will light up green. Go ahead and touch it and we'll walk into the boss fight. the regal ancestor spirit warp out head north light this grace and then we're going to warp back to the ancestral wood side of grace and level up we're going to be putting one into dexterity picking up the finger slayer blade we're going to warp back to ronnie's rice we're going to give Ronnie the Finger Slayer Blade. She in turn is going to give us an inverted statue. We're going to go ahead and use that statue right it away. See, not blithe it seemeth. So this is the spot on the map that we're interested in. To get there though, we're going to warp to Renala's Site of Grace in Raya Lucaria Academy. You take the lift down and then we're going to go through this teleporter. It's going to take us to the Church of Vows. 
from the Church of Vows, just head southeast to the Carrion Study Hall. Place the inverted statue, run through, and all the way, we're going to go up the Divine Tower and pick up the Curse Mark of Death. This comes my least favorite part of the game. So go ahead and warp back to the round table. We're going to talk to Fia and hug her a few times. Basically, we're going to get her to give us the weather dagger. She gives you a Baldekin's blessing every time you hug her. So when you're done talking to her, go ahead and use that Baldekin's blessing because it gives you minus 10% maximum HP. Once she gives you the weather dagger, let's go ahead and talk to D. Give it to him. I'm known as D. We're going to rest at the round table. That in turn is going to open up the room just past Smithing Master Hugh. Walk in, grab D stuff, talk to Fia. Finally, it is returned to its rightful place. And we're going to warp back underground to the aqueduct facing side of Grace. We'll be going after the gargoyles that don't bleed, so I recommend doing the Lord of Blood's exaltation swap. If you talk to D's brother down there and give him the armor, Right there where my character was, you'll be able to summon D for the gargoyle fight. That is optional, however. I don't summon D, but I will show you giving the armor to his brother. Going up the stairs, you'll see his summon sign on the ground. Use it if you're having trouble. Use your summon if you're having trouble. You have options if you have trouble against these guys. Before continuing on, let's go ahead and spend our runes. We're going to put one point into our cane. Go ahead and rest in the coffin. That's going to take you to deep root deaths. I'm going to show you the side path that I take. I recommend taking it so you can pop the ants. They give you rune arcs and they also give you golden runes which are worth about 12,500 each I believe.
if you haven't done so, don't forget to switch back to the Lord of Blood's Exaltation after that gargoyle fight. After defeating Fia's champs comes another few rounds of hugging Fia. Exhaust her dialogue. Don't forget to use the Baldachine blessing. Once she falls asleep, you're going to want to enter the deathbed dream and we'll be fighting our next remembrance boss, Fortisax. So with Fortisex, you want to watch out for the death blight clouds. If your death blight meter fills up, it's instant death. When your character lights up with lightning, that means you're going to be struck. All you have to do is keep on moving or roll at the last instant. He does jumping attacks also that you need to watch out for. When he slams down, that means he's going to be slamming lightning into an area of effect. So watch out for that. Other than that, just stay on the move and stay near his rear legs and you should be fine. Fortisax down, you have your first alternate ending, the Mending Rune of the Death Prince. Go ahead and grab that, and then rest at the side of Grace to level up. We're going to put three points into Arcane. If you don't have the runes to level up, pop Golden Runes, pop Remembrances, whatever you need to complete the three levels towards Arcane.
This next part is optional. You can kill D and get the twin armor set back. Also, he'll drop his weapon, the inseparable sword. It's a strength faith weapon. Forgive me. Next, warp to the eternal nameless city site of grace. There's a coffin you're going to want to rest that's right by it. Go through it. That will take you to Angel River, Maine. Go through Angel River, Maine and you'll come across a baby Estelle. I went ahead and fought it. It is purely optional, but I'm showing you that I fought it so we don't miscount any runes. So past this baby Estelle, you're going to go through Nakron, the Eternal City. There's going to be a lift that will take you down right before the Lake of Rot. Past the Lake of Rot, right before entering Estelle's Arena, you're going to want to switch your Physic. I switched out the Thorny Crack tier for the Dexterity tier. So I'll be going in with the Dexterity tier and the Faith tier. And with Estelle taken care of, let's go ahead and level up. We're going to add one to Vigor and one to Arcane. Next, we're going to continue on to the mountaintops. So go ahead and grab the Forbidden Land site of Grace. We're going to head east to the Grand Lift of Rold. We're going to head north east and then south towards our next remembrance boss the fire giant go ahead and swap out the dexterity tier for the thorny tier so you'll be going in with the thorny tier and the faith tier also swap out the lord of blood's exaltation for either the fire scorpion charm ritual sword or the dragon crest great shield talisman So my strategy for phase 1 is pretty basic. I try to stay as close to his left foot as possible. That's the one that has a shackle on it that breaks. Of course you have to watch out for his foot stomp. I believe he has a hand stomp as well. He definitely has an area of effect attack that does fire damage when he puts his left hand down. He also swings his shield around if you're not near him. So that's why I always stay near his foot as much as possible.
So he's about to enter phase two. Once his health is around 50% or lower, he'll go into phase two. You can try to get a buff off before he phase changes or right at the beginning. I got it a little late at the very beginning of phase two. So I wasn't able to attack his hand that was on the ground. If you're not able to attack his hand on the ground or even if you do, what I like to do is usually back away from him because he starts to spit flame balls out of his stomach mouth. So once he's done with his stomach flame ball attack, I immediately close the distance, get near the flame balls that he conjured, let them explode, and then just stay in front of him. Even when he rolls, just stay in front of him. Usually, he'll do a right hand slam down, and then a double hand slam down. That's your key to attack. Sometimes he'll do a slam down with his left hand, and then a right swipe with his right hand. Be careful for that attack. But pretty much, just stay close to him. When he rolls, run with him or jump on Torrent and close the distance. Down goes a fire giant. Let's go ahead and spend those runes. We're going to be putting three points into vigor, and that's going to end part one of the Rivers of Blood guide. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. If you have any requests on weapons or weapon arts that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Here's a preview of part two. Hey! This one should only be a two part guide. As it's a new game plus guide, most of the work has already been done. Again, thanks for everybody. Thanks for the support. Thanks for your criticism. See you on the next one. Bye.